thing that I really appreciate about these Baltimore Ravens is that while they haven't been playing their best football yet, while they still got some things that they got to clean up, they're sitting at 2-0 and right now, and they're still, still trying to make upgrades to this football team. Cam Akers, who apparently has fell out of favor with the Rams, uh, and the Rams have him on the chopping block right now. You know what? Let's just let, let's go straight to the report from Jordan Schultz. It says, sources, several teams have checked in with the Rams about a potential Cam Akers trade including the Bucks, the Raiders, the Browns, and the Baltimore Ravens, amongst others. Uh, it's still possible Akers gets released for salary reasons, but the team is actively shopping him, and he's more than likely played his last game there. And here goes the part where I think Cam Akers' agent threw Jordan Schultz a little extra cash on the side because he said Akers had three consecutive 100-plus yard rushing games with three touchdowns to close out last season. And I, I think he did that because – the last game that he played in this year uh, for the Rams, it wasn't so memorable because he had 22 attempts for 29 yards, averaged 1.3 yards per carry, but he did have a touchdown, and that's what counts the most is you adding to that scoreboard. But anyway, Cam Akers is available, and the Ravens, in Ravens fashion, they checked in on him. Now, you know, if you know Eric DaCosta, then you know anybody who comes available, whether he is seriously interested or not. Eric DaCosta will always do that check-in, and I've appreciated him for doing that over the years. Uh, we've always heard about how Eric DaCosta, he will make that phone call just to see, just to sort of gauge what it would take to get a player, just sort of to gauge the interest level that the team has in getting rid of that player, just to gauge exactly what the market could possibly be for that player. And that's something that you got to do. In business, you, you, you got to check on things like that just so you know what to expect, whether you're trying to get that player or you're trying to get a player in that similar position in the future. But apparently the Baltimore Ravens, they looked at their running back situation right now and they said, you know what? We want more. We need more. Because right now they lost J.K. Dobbins. He is gone for the remainder of this season, and that is extremely unfortunate. Uh, they have Gus Edwards who just comes in and does his job. He doesn't do anything but produce. He is a silent assassin because he comes in, doesn't make a lot of noise. You don't ever hear from Gus Edwards, but he just does nothing but produce. You have Justice Hill uh, who's continued to be a contributor. Uh, and then you have Melvin Gordon. We haven't seen him in regular season action yet, but we know Melvin Gordon and all the experience that he has as a runner in this football league. Then you also have Keaton Mitchell. Keith Mitchell currently on injury reserve. He has two games left to serve uh, before he's eligible for the Ravens to bring him back. We'll see what they do uh, one hit, once his time is up. But that is the Ravens' current running back room. That is their current running back situation. But they looked at it and said, you know what? No, 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 no. We want to upgrade that. So Cam Akers, what could he bring to these Baltimore Ravens? Well, Cam Akers, um, while he hasn't had the best productivity – um, he does, when I watch him run, his running style, minus the power, he runs to me, in my opinion, similar to Gus Edwards, minus the power. He ain't trucking nobody like that because Cam Akers, he does not have the breakaway speed. He's not a burner like that. And that's fine. Not every running back is going to be a burner, but he makes the, the smart decisions. Uh, he got, he got decent speed, uh, but he, he, he runs smooth. Like Gus Edwards Gus Edwards ain't gonna be Cutting on a dime like that But Gus Edwards Is very smooth with it And when I watch Cam Akers He is the same way So behind Baltimore Ravens Offensive line Then I think he could do Much better than he did With the Rams Behind their offensive line But Cam Akers may not even be The answer When it comes to The Baltimore Ravens Running back situation Because They still did some more digging Cam Akers was just one option that they looked at, but they are bringing in a very familiar face. Somebody who actually was on the Ravens last year at the running back position last year, and that is Drizzy Drake, Kenyon Drake. Let's read the report from Jeff Zrebic. He said, looking to potentially add to their running back depth, Ravens will bring in Kenyon Drake, who played well for them last year for a visit. At this point, nothing has been finalized yet. So the Baltimore Ravens are like, look, we checking in on Cam Akers. We looking at Cam Akers. We seeing what's up with Cam Akers. All right, cool. But we are actually going to bring in Kenyon Drake, somebody who they are very familiar with. Now, when you look at his numbers from last year, Kenyon Drake, that is, uh, they weren't so sexy or whatnot, but he was sharing 
the wealth uh, because he was sort of a placeholder until J.K. Dobbins came back because we still had Gus Edwards there, too. We still had Justice Hill there, too. Uh, but Kenyon Drake was sort of like, all right, I'll hold it down until y'all get J.K. Dobbins back, and then I'll probably take a back seat. And that's exactly what happened. His numbers last year, uh, he had 109 attempts for 482 yards, and he averaged 4.4 yards per carry, and he had four touchdowns. So, again, nothing too crazy. But, again, when, when you context is important as usual because when you realize what his role was last year, it would be unfair to expect crazy numbers from him. But that average, that average 4.4 yards per carry, that's nice right there. And with Kenyon Drake, what he could bring to the Baltimore Ravens is familiarity. He knows the team. The offense is new now, but it may be an offense that suits him that much more, especially when it comes to catching passes out of the backfield because that is one of Kenyon Drake's specialties. Uh, with You saw the way that Lamar Jackson, he continued to use Justice Hill in a passing game uh, this past week against the Bengals because Lamar Jackson, he would face pressure. It would be all in his face, but they wouldn't send Justice Hill on these crazy routes. They would have Justice Hill right there as a check down guy. And as you all have also seen, the Baltimore Ravens have been using more screens than they ever used uh, the, in the entire previous offense. Like the Baltimore Ravens run like it seems like they run like five screens a game almost. They be screening it up all the time. Uh, so pass catching running backs, they eat off of that. They can feed their families off of those screens. So with King and Drake possibly coming back, then this is an offense that he'll be he'll be solid in. Now I'm sure he will not be asked to be the starter. You got a Gus Edwards. You got a Justice Hill who that role seems to be going to one of them. But he'll just come in and be asked, hey, just, just fill this role for a bit. Just hold it down for a bit. They'll probably sign him to the practice squad right now uh, just so he can hold it down there for a little minute, maybe until Keaton Mitchell gets back. Hey, who knows? But let's flip back to Cam Akers for a second because with him, I feel like he brings something to these Baltimore Ravens that maybe Kenyon Drake doesn't necessarily bring, and I'm not even talking about on the field. Uh, when you look at Odell Beckham Jr., you look at Deron Harmon, who they just signed last week. Uh, you think about the potential of bringing in Cam Akers. Uh, you think about how they signed Nelson Aguilar. You think about how they still have Justin Tucker. Uh, you think about their head coach, John Harbaugh. You think about the wide receiver coach that they brought who was on the Chiefs last year. You think about all those guys, and hey, there could be more that I'm missing, but what do all of those guys have in common? Super Bowl winning experience. We talked about how this Baltimore Ravens team this year, they have a, ser a serious shot at not only making some noise in the playoffs, but making some noise all the way to the Super Bowl, all the way. And they have brought in several people at several different positions that can assist them with that. And that is something that is extremely important because you can have all the dreams and aspirations of accomplishing something, but it helps that much more and it can push you that much more if you know somebody that has experience actually getting there and winning that. Now, because it's, it's one thing, if you just got there before and you didn't finish the job, you didn't accomplish it, yeah, your advice can be great. Things that you can bring to the table can still be great, but for somebody that's actually accomplished it, that's finished the job, ooh, it, it, it's just that much more significant. So with Cam Akers, will the Baltimore Ravens bring him in? We'll see. It's still to, to be determined. If I had to choose one, I think the Baltimore Ravens would certainly lean towards King and Drake because they don't have to give up any assets for King and Drake. And they can make it, it doesn't have to be any commitment because they can just put him on a practice squad. So I, I think they will lean to more towards King and Drake. But if they do bring in Cam Akers, that's something that he also adds to the table. Now, uh, in some not so good news, um, the Baltimore Ravens did make a couple of moves. Uh, they did sign Sam Mustafer to the 53-man roster. So it's like, hey, Sam Mustafer, welcome aboard. That, that performance that he had uh, against the Bengals, it was good enough. They said, oh, no, 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 you ain't going nowhere because had they left Sam Mustafer on the practice squad, somebody could have watched that game against the Bengals and be like, hold up. 
this dude can play, especially old Bears fan, because so many Bears fans always reminded us of how bad he was. But he erased all of that in that game against the Bengals. But the Ravens, they did not want to take any risk with him. So they said, no, you're coming to the active roster, Sam. But with a 53-man roster, somebody is added to it. Somebody has to be removed. And that person who was removed or put on injury reserve was our Darius Washington. I didn't even know he was hurt. I, I did not even know he was hurt. But they said that our Darius Washington, he has a chest injury. And they have placed him on IR. So uh, with our Darius Washington, uh, he will miss at least the next four games possibly longer we'll see because we don't have the details on exactly what his injury is and it's a shame for Darius Washington he even tweeted out afterwards he said he he's never taken being on the field for granted ever and that's real right there Darius Washington made it he made it like like people say he, he got it out the mud because he came in as an undrafted rookie free agent uh, spent most of that year, I believe, on injury reserve, but then came back the following year. And, and again, as an undrafted rookie free agent, for them to keep you around after you didn't even play much in your first year, that says a lot. So they had some high hopes for you. But then this year, he showed himself in the preseason. He made the active roster. Active roster. And then was not necessarily a starter, but he got a lot of playing time as that slot nickel corner. Uh, but now that's being temporarily put on hold since he's on IR. Now, I wonder with them putting him on IR if this also means that, hey, Marlon Humphrey, he's good to go. Now, of course, Ardeus Washington, if he's injured, he won't be able to play. So I'm sure they would have put him on injury reserve anyway. But this will be some great timing for Marlon Humphrey uh, to make his return. And now with him being out, with Ardarius Washington being out, say for instance, Marlon Humphrey doesn't come back this week yet. I wonder who fills that spot at slot corner. I guess we'll see. But team, keep it clean. I love you all. I appreciate you, you all so much. I thank you too for appreciating the captions uh, in that previous video. Uh, it's still a lot to work on. It's still a lot to get through, but we will get through it. And because I, I got to do a lot of editing with those and whatnot, uh, just to try to make them even better for you all. But I appreciate you all so much. I, I really, really do. So thank you. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel and y'all just keep on being great positive people that you are. Team, keep it clean. We out.